in your Bibles, please, in our text verse again. Hope you brought your Bible this morning. Love to see people come up to church from their cars with a Bible in their hand. May the Lord bless you for being a Bible-believing congregation. I want to preach to you on the subject of the Bible from the Bible again this morning. And our text verse is verse 3 where the Bible says, But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him? I don't know if you are aware of this. I know some people are. But the very first four words that the devil spoke to Eve were in the form of a question. You'll find them in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. And the question that the devil spoke to her was dealing with the subject of the Word of God. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. The devil was trying to bring doubt into the mind of that woman about what God had said to the first couple. I want you to know that whether it be some book that you've read or some class that you took in a heathen school or whether it's somebody that you're friends with that would try to cast doubt upon the Word of God, that in my opinion, based on what the Bible says, I would say that the devil is trying to use that person to get you to doubt God's Word. You come to this church, we're going to try and reinforce in your mind that the Bible is God's Word. Amen. And uh, this is a Bible-believing church. If you wandered in here hoping that we were going to critique the Bible, you're in the wrong place. The Bible is the authority. Not me. Certainly not you. Nobody out there in the government. The Bible is God's written authority by which you and I are going to be judged one day. But in this text verse, I'd like to point out to you four words from our Lord. And he was asking a question that didn't have so much to do with whether or not that God's Word could be relied upon. But he's asking the question to determine were they ignorant because of neglect of knowing what the Bible says. The question is and the first four words are, Have ye not read? You listen to me. One of the main reasons, not the, but, but at least one of the main reasons why people are so ignorant of the Bible is they just don't read it. Amen. Amen. They just don't take the time to read the Bible. Right. Two verses later, down in verse 5, our Lord asked again, and we read it. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? And down in verse 7, he said, But if ye had known what this meaneth. And I say to you again, the reason why people don't know what the Bible means is because they haven't been reading enough of what it says. That's why there's so much confusion. That's why there's so much contention about interpretation of the Bible is because most people who argue about whether or not the Bible is the Bible don't spend time reading that Bible from front to back. Those of us who are diligent in reading our Bibles through from front to back repeatedly over the years have had the Holy Ghost testify in our hearts that this book is the Word of God. Amen. And if you as a saved person will read this book with a believing and a receptive, responsive heart telling you that God will bear witness to that fact with you as well. By the way, there's, that's also one of the reasons why so many people call for a new translation. If you come to Bible Institute classes this Saturday, our plan is in the, uh, in the fourth class of the four classes we teach from four to seven on Saturdays, we're going to compare the King James Bible with the new King James Bible.
King James Version. And guess which one we believe? It's this one, the old King James Version. Commonly referred to as the King James Bible or the King James 1611 Authorized Version Bible. We'll show you why. You won't have to wonder or say, well, the preacher's prejudice. We'll read the verses. You can look at them. And you'll see the difference between the holy and the profane, between the true and the false. It is not true that the King James Bible is so much harder to understand than other versions. There are places where some of the other versions are more difficult. We have a handful of people in this auditorium this morning that can tell you what Job 6.6 6 says in the Revised Standard Version. And it's a whole lot easier to understand in your King James Bible. Amen. King James Bible says, or is there any taste in the white of an egg? And some of y'all know what the RSV says in Job 6.6. 6. It says, is there any taste in the slime of the purslane? Which one's easier? Yeah. I don't know, but that slime of the purslane sounds dangerous. I've eaten the white of an egg, and it can be helped with some salt and pepper. Yeah. I don't even want to think about the slime of the purse lane. I don't even want to know where it came from. But the problem is with the King James Bible is most of us are lazy. We want to be able to look at it, and it just uh, by glancing at it, uh, we should be able to understand it. Folks, this is God's book. Good man. You need to have the Holy Ghost to be able to grasp this book at all. That's right. Now, I'm not talking about just memorizing its contents. Unsaved people can memorize its contents. But to be able to get a grasp of the meaning of this book, you have to have spiritual help because this is the sword of the Spirit. As someone said, it doesn't need to be rewritten. It just needs to be reread. Yeah. Don't be lazy. People are ignorant of the Bible, and in some cases, they're willingly ignorant. They not only don't know the Bible, they don't want to know. The Bible says of some pe people about the second coming, in 2 Peter 3, 5, it says, For this they willingly are ignorant of. Right. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old. One of the main answers that Jesus gave to his critics when they would find fault with something he was doing or something he was teaching could be worded this way. Haven't you read your Bible? When they bring up some objection, when they'd ask him a question about, why are you doing this? He might say to him, like he said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he said, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? What you been reading? You spending all your time on the internet? You watching the boob tube? Read your Bible. The title of the message is, Why People Don't Read the Bible. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Why people don't read the Bible. In Matthew 21, 16, some people were criticizing Jesus because of the adoration he was receiving from disciples and others. And they said to him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? He said, have you never read? That's Matthew 21, 16. Now in verse 42 of the same chapter, Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builder rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? You remember there were Sadducees that questioned him about the resurrection. And he said to them in his answer, in Matthew 22, 31, But it's touching the resurrection of the dead. Have you not read? that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, as they asked him questions of theology and of what we call hermeneutics in study of the Bible, interpretation of the Bible, it's nothing more than just interpretation, as Jesus would deal with their questions, he would just answer by saying, what's the matter? You haven't been reading? You have never read this? And then he'd quote to them. Have you not read so much as this? He said in one place, what David did when himself was hungry. And he said to the Sadducees in Matthew 22, 29, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures.
Scriptures, neither the power of God. A lot of that was said to religious teachers, masters of Israel, what we would call today ministers or preachers in churches. And he said in each case that I've given to you the question, what you been reading? You haven't been reading your Bible. Why is it that people don't read the Bible? I'm going to give you some very, very simple reasons. Number one, People don't read the Bible because of its words that it contains. They don't like the words. When people find fault with the King James Bible, they don't like the words Amen. of the King James Bible. But you know what the Bible says about the words of God? The Bible says the words of the Lord are pure words. Amen. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Amen. Psalm 12, 6. There are people who will put up with gutter language, bathroom talk, where they work and never say a word. That's right. That's right. And they'll complain because that they have to look up a word in their King James Bible. You see, the content of these words is spiritual. Yeah. And so your flesh is not drawn to it. Yeah. Somebody says, I'd like to have a Bible that is as easy to understand as Charlie Brown or Snuffy Smith or some, uh, some cartoon. You know what? If you had a Bible that was that easy for anybody to understand, it wouldn't be the Word of God because it takes God to help somebody to understand the Bible. You listen to me. If you don't read your Bible, probably it's because you don't like this book's pure words. You see, this book, you've heard me call it the King James 1611 Bible. This book is the Holy Bible. Amen. I remember doing a, a survey one time in a fairgrounds and we were using it as an opportunity to witness to people and the survey would end with a question about if they knew they were going to heaven when they died. One of the questions we asked them just of a religious nature is which Bible do you like? I'll never forget one young black person said to me, he says, oh, sir, I like the Holy Bible. Amen. I do too. Amen. You see, the words of the Lord are pure words. And the content of this Bible is spiritual. It's not flesh. The, the comprehension of this Bible is spiritual, Amen. not flesh. I, what I'm saying by that is, is an 11-year-old boy that loves God, believes the Bible, is saved, has a better opportunity to understand the Bible than a 35-year-old college professor <coughs> in literature that does not know God. Because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, preacher, you sound like you have a disdain for education. I'm just saying that the education of this world will not help you to grasp the spiritual truths of this book. You've got to have the Holy Spirit. That's right. To be able to understand. Now the reason why many Christians don't read the Bible like they should. Come on now, listen to me. This could be a revival meeting. Amen. If you make up your mind, you're going to quit spending time doing everything but reading your Bible. Right. You could have a revival in your heart and life if you make up your mind. You're not going to eat breakfast without reading the Bible first. Yeah. You're not going to go to bed at night without reading the Bible first. Amen. Don't let a day go by. And I'm telling you, you, if you're not reading your Bible, you can have a spiritual revival if you're saved. Many Christians don't read the Bible because they have a carnal appetite. They have carnal desires. They have a carnal understanding. The pure words of the Word of God is a stumbling block to them. Number two, Another reason why people don't read the Bible is simple enough for you. The words are holy. The words take heavenly understanding. Number two, 
People don't read the Bible because of its wisdom. If you want to be educated in the sight of God, listen to Him. If you want to be wise in the sight of God, learn His Word. Amen. Read His Word. Amen. Listen, folks, I'm not trying to be a theologian today. I'm not trying to impress anybody today. What I'm trying to get up upon you and get in you is something very simple, and that is everybody here, if you're saved, I'm just trying to encourage you, read your Bible. Amen. Amen. It will keep you clean. That's one of the best things about daily Bible reading. It will focus your mind and your heart in the right direction. It's a whole lot more important for you to get up in the morning and get into the Word of God and get clean than it is to be able to iron out any supposed discrepancies between Chronicles and Samuel. Preacher, you ever give a thought to the differences in the numbers here? No, sir, I sure don't. What I give thought to when I read the Bible most of the time is, is I'm living, am I living as God wants me to live? Amen. Amen. I want to understand the Bible too. But I tell you what, there was an unsaved man that, that is quoted as saying this. I don't know if he, if he said it or not. But Mark Twain was quoted as saying, it's not the things in the Bible that I don't understand that bother me. It's the things in the Bible that I do understand they bother me. Amen. That's because it's a holy book. Yes. People don't read the Bible because of its words. They don't read the Bible because of its wisdom. I gave you 1 Corinthians 2.14 that says that the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The verse right before that says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This book is a book of wisdom. Amen. 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 The wisest people you'll ever meet in life are people who've lived in this book and people who have lived by this book. Amen. People who have revered this book received this book, tried to respond properly to this book, and applied in their own hearts and lives and in their families, those are some people you want to spend time with. Amen. Those are people who have real sense. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Unsaved people who spend six years going to some college and university and don't know the Lord and don't know this Bible, to me, are some of the most boring people you'll ever run into. Amen. 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 They think that because that they got some terminology they've memorized yeah. to describe things, that that makes them wise. Yeah. Folks, the Bible tells you what real wisdom is. The fear of the Lord Amen. is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. That's real wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Psalm 111, verse 10. You fear God, you're smart. You don't fear God, you're a fool. I don't care if you've got enough degrees to be a thermometer. You're still a fool if you don't fear God. Wisdom is to fear God. Another thing the Bible says is wisdom is to forsake evil. I respect people who have real wisdom. And the people who I respect are people who show that they read this Bible by fearing God and forsaking evil. Yeah. People who want to live holy. People who want to obey the Lord. I'm not talking about perfect people. I haven't met any of them. But I'm talking about people that know they've got a perfect Bible. <coughs> They fear God. They keep His commandments. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You can be known not only for what you like, but you can be known for what you don't like. You can be known and known as wise because you hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the forward mouth 
do I hate? Job 28, 28 says, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart, to depart from evil is understanding. I say to you again, this book is not just a book of philosophy. It is not just a book of theology. This is the Holy Bible. And the Holy Bible will give you a holy understanding. And when you get holiness in your heart, you'll have wisdom Amen. in your heart and in your mind. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. If you ever get a heart that is directed toward wisdom, you'll read that Bible. That's right. Amen. But some people don't they, don't, they don't have no fear of the Lord. They don't have any forsaking of evil. And so they don't read the Bible. Number three, people don't read the Bible. I'm giving you W's if y'all figured that out. First, because of its word. Second, because of its wisdom. A third reason why people don't read the Bible is because of its worth to them. Because of its worth to them. What's the expression that they use in, in uh, flea markets, yard sales, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And vice versa. The Bible says in Psalm 19 of the Word of God, it says, More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey. And the honeycomb. Amen. If you were to check out my finances my investments in the future and all, you might say, boy, I thought you was a poor preacher just by listening to you. <laughs> now I really know you're a poor Amen, preacher. preacher. Right. But the truth is, is if you've got the Word of God in your heart and in your life, if you're a saved person who spends a lot of time in the Bible and the Bible is shaping you, you're more prepared for the future than a lot of people are. Amen. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. You see, you can get some rest in your heart from this book. Amen. Amen. This book says, Great peace have they which love thy law. Amen. Do you know there's people who've got money in stocks and bonds who commit suicide? Amen. Do you know there are millionaires who commit suicide? Amen. Do you know there are people with lots of money that shoot their brains out? Because they're not happy. They don't have the rest that God could give them. People don't value the Word of God. They don't value the Word of God, so they don't read the Word of God. Some people value TV more than they do the Bible. Amen. They value the internet and computers more than they value their Bible reading. They value their newspapers more than they value their Bible. They value their magazine, their books. They value their sports and their music. Now, one of the things that will measure what something is worth to you is the time you're willing to devote to it. Amen. Somebody has said that's worthy of, of bringing up on this Mother's Day, that to a kid, love is spelled T-I-M-E. That's true. One of the most valuable things I could ever give to somebody is time. And where I spend my time is will indicate where my love is. If you love the Bible, you'll take the time to read it. Amen. <clears throat> Whatever you love, you're liable to take the time to do it if it's important to you. Let me mention another thing about the Bible and why some people don't read it. I hope that you can apply each one of these to your own life if you are reading the Bible and say, no, that's the reason why I read it. I read it because of its words. I read it because of its wisdom. I read it because of its worth. Yeah. Then finally, I want to say that some people don't read the Bible because of its work. What I mean is what it does in you when you read it. Some people don't like what that book's going to do because this book will change you. Amen. If you receive this book properly, it'll change you. Amen. You don't have to worry about being accused of being a copycat of somebody. It, the book will change you. The Word of God will sanctify you. The 
Bible says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That book pierces. That was Hebrews 4.12 I was reading to you. Goes down deep. I preach with confidence because I know that God blesses His Word. Amen. Amen. I don't have enough sense to figure out what you people need. I pray and I ask God to have mercy and help. But I believe there's a God in heaven. Amen. And I believe that when we get together and I preach what the Bible says, that God can take that sword and go down deep. Amen. Amen. And produce something good in us on a Mother's Day. When I'm preaching to you about why men, why people don't read the Bible. One of the places I like in the Bible is that old left-handed guy. You like left-handed people, don't you? My wife's left-handed. That's not all that's strange about this appeal. Amen. I've heard that <laughs> well, we're getting lots of amens now. But Ehud and Eglon. Y'all remember the story back there in Judges? Ehud was a left-handed judge of Israel. And he went up to get old, that old fat king. And the Bible says he had a dagger hidden under his thigh and he brought that dagger out and says, I got a message from God to thee, O king. Amen. Point number one. <laughs> Did you get it? The Bible says it went down so deep that it disappeared. Wow. The help went in after the blade and the Bible then says, and the dirt came out. Amen. Talking about his insides. Amen. But it referred to us because we're made of the dust of the ground. Amen. And it says, the dirt came out. Talking about his insides. But you know what that's a picture of? When the Word of God goes in, the dirt will come out. Amen. 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 I remember when we were little kids, I used to uh, have drills and things about artificial respiration. And uh, they would. Uh, one of the things I would remember in some of the cartoons and things they would do is uh, they tried to get water out of somebody that, that was drowning. They'd say, out to the bad and in with the good. Amen. Dearly beloved, you get the good word of God in you, it'll push that bad out. Amen. Right. Amen. He put Eglon's a good picture of the word of God and its work. It promotes the Savior. That's what this book does. Lord willing, I'll preach about Jesus tonight. This book promotes Jesus. Amen. This book pricks the sinner of his sin. It produces spirituality. It preaches sacrifice. Thank God for the Bible. My friend, let's love the Bible. Let's read the Bible. Let's live in the Bible. It's precious. The precious Bible, though the cover is torn and pages, our cover is worn and pages are torn. By the way, over a period of years, that ought to be true of you. And though places bear traces of tears, Yet more precious than gold is this book. Worn and old that can shatter and scatter my fears. When I prayerfully look at this precious book, many pleasures and treasures I see. Many tokens of love from the Father above who is nearest and dearest to me. This book is my God. Tis a friend by my side. It will lighten and brighten my day. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I read it and heed it Amen. each day. Amen. May the Lord help Glenwood Baptist Church and every visitor here to be a congregation of Bible readers. Amen. Yes, there's more to it than that. Yes, we need to be saved. Yes, we need to live by what we read. Don't need to be hypocrites. But the thrust of the message today is, if you're not reading the Bible, get into it. Amen. Now, if the Lord's dealt with you about something else, this would be a good time for you to respond, whatever. If you've been leaving your Bible alone, I'd like to invite you to come down and talk to God about it. <coughs> Ask God to help you to start picking up that Bible and reading it yeah. all the time. If you're here and you're not sure you're saved, this would be a good time for you to obey the instruction of the Word of God, to be born again and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know for sure you're saved and the music plays, I'd like to invite you to come down this aisle when we uh, are done in just a moment.
We'll take the Bible and show you from the Bible how to be saved. Just come and say, Preacher, I need to be saved. We'll show you from God's Word how you can be saved and know it. If you're already saved, you need to confess Christ publicly. Come do that. If you need to come for baptism, come do that. If you need to join the church, come do that. If you need to make a change in your life about this book, would you do that today? Let's stand together. Heads bowed, please. Just a